I'm Lucy from So Essential and I'm here today to share with you my top tips, techniques and tools for pressing. So it's not the most exciting part of sewing, but if you can get it right, it really will elevate your sewing projects to the next level. Everything I talk about today is available on our lovely website and you'll find links to our website and the products I mentioned below. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe because every Friday I'll bring you a video packed full of sewing goodness. If you can't wait for a week, then do jump on and follow our Instagram account where you'll find daily posts on our grid with tips, tutorials, techniques, general sewing inspo as well. So let's get started with the basics. I'll talk you through the very fundamental basics now and then we'll progress on to demonstrating some of the techniques and the tools and how you can use them to get great results in your pressing. So the first thing I want to mention, the most important thing, is the iron that you're going to use. Now in an ideal world I would recommend one of these steam generator irons. So you fill this section up with water and it produces a lot more steam than your standard domestic irons. It really does get much better results, it's more powerful and it works better for your general ironing pile as well if you need any further justification. They are more expensive than a standard domestic iron and it's not essential, you can manage with a standard domestic iron but if you can afford a steam generator it really does make a lot of difference. The other thing it's important to remember is it is important to keep your iron plate clean. If you live in a hard water area like me, that can be tricky. And one of the tips you can use is to use distilled water in your iron instead. But we also stock iron cleaner, which you can use to clean the plate of your iron. I think it's wax and you apply it to the plate of the iron and it just allows you to clean off any residue. And then the other thing I would mention as well is that we do stock these mini irons which I've recently invested in one of these myself. This is a prim one, this is mine and then we also have the so easy versions as well and these are great for people who like me are short on space, you, can't, you don't want to have or can't have your full sized iron and ironing board up all the time. This is really handy for some of those little delicate bits that you might want to press and you might not want to go to that trouble um, or just yeah if you are trying to be really accurate accurate and precise in a very small area these can be useful and then finally it's just worth saying as well do make sure that you've got um, a good quality ironing board just in terms of the level of padding and the fact that there's no lumps or bumps because if you have got lumps or bumps if you press your fabric over one of those it can leave an imprint on the fabric and just distort the fabric and leave a mark so it's just worth bearing that in mind as well but let's hop on now and have a look at some pressing techniques and tools so the first thing we want to do before we start any sewing project is to iron the fabric and when we iron fabric we place the iron on the fabric and glide it across the fabric just like you do when you're ironing your clothes to smooth out any creases. However, when we press there's a stark difference and that is because if we were pressing, if this was a seam for example and we were pressing that seam, rather than applying the iron and gliding it across the fabric, we apply the iron, press as the name suggests, lift, move it across, press the next section, lift, move it across and press the next section. You might want to apply some steam depending on the type of fabric, you might need to apply more pressure with certain types of fabric. But the reason that we need to be mindful of that difference is that ironing a seam could distort the seam, could affect the straight of grain and you don't want to do that, you just want to secure that seam and press it so that the seam looks nice and neat on the exterior of the garment. If you've got particularly stubborn creases, this Best Press Starch Spray is fantastic. It works really well to eliminate those. We sell this on the website and it comes with a little pump spray. Um, and is also useful for any really stubborn creases in your general ironing pile as well. And the other golden rule that I wanted to run through with you is that you should never cross a seam until it has been pressed. So here is a sleeve seam and what that means is I shouldn't sew either the hem 
all the sleeve seam where it attaches to the bodice until I've pressed this seam first because if I do that I won't be able to press all the areas of the seam properly and that is a golden rule. It doesn't mean that you have to sew and press every seam as you go along. There might be several seams that you can sew and go and press in a job lot before you then sew the intersecting seams on those. The other advice I would give as well is to finish the seams before you press and this is because if we press this seam open on this sleeve and then we go away and sew, then neaten the seams and sew this on our overlocker, instead of that seam sitting nice and flat it will be sticking up and it will be at, a, at an angle to the fabric, it won't be sitting neatly pressed against the fabric. Now the only caveat with that is with certain fabrics you might run the risk of some of these stitches showing on the actual fabric and leaving an indentation. Now if you're worried about that you can just get a piece of calico or card, just slip that underneath the seam and then press the seam with the calico or the card acting as a barrier between those stitches and the fabric. Now it is possible to overpress fabric and that can cause shine on the fabric, it can cause the fabric to be distorted in different ways so we need to be mindful not to overpress as well. And another thing that can sort of help with this and give you more confidence with pressing is using a pressing cloth like this silk organza that I've got here which is a fantastic aid and pressing cloth. We sell this by the half metre. If you buy half a metre you'll get two pressing cloths out of it that will last you a lifetime. You can just overlock the raw edges to keep it neat. But the great thing about silk organza it's an extremely durable fabric and it will diffuse the heat slightly so it allows you to work with a higher temperature on your iron but it also protects the fabric but the great thing about it of course as well is that it is sheer so you can see what you're doing. If I was to press that seam I can see what I'm doing through the organza, the silk organza and I know exactly where I'm pressing but I've got that level of protection as well. So that's just another little tip for you. I've got my silk organza pressing cloth here. It is uh, very much well loved and very much well used. I use it pretty much every sewing project I do. You can see I've just overlocked the edges there um, but that works really well for me. Now when we press the seam I would always recommend pressing the seam flat first and you can apply some steam if you need to depending on the fabric. Although more, more often than not you will need to apply the steam but press it flat first and then press it open. And you can see there that, that those seam allowances are going to sit nice and flat against the fabric and on the right side we've got a nice clean seam there. You know the fabric is sitting nice and flat and we can see a nice crisp line which is what you want to achieve. You might prefer to finish the seam allowances together, particularly on lighter weight fabrics. I sometimes do that if I want a really neat finish and I want um, so it, it's lightweight enough that it's not going to be bulky if I finish the seams together. And in that case, if these seams were finished together, I would just press them to the side. And if they were finished together, that would sit flat now and that's how that would work. And then again, from the other side, you've got a nice clean seam line there. The other thing to bear in mind is that you will have curved seams. So you will have things like a princess seam, which I've got here. And you can see I've clipped into the curves there. Most princess seams will be lined. Um, and therefore you can clip to enable the fabric to manoeuvre so that you can press and get into that curve. If it's a shallower curve, which it often is for me, I, I'm quite small busted so the curve might not be too exaggerated. It, it is possible to again overlock the seams and finish them close to the seam line then press the seam allowances to one side. That is possible as long as the fabric's not too bulky and the curve isn't too exaggerated but if it is a more exaggerated curve you will need to clip the seam allowances and then line it ideally. But what we would recommend for any curved seams like this is that you always use a tailor's ham. Um, for these seams. Now 
this is a, a really essential piece of equipment for successful pressing. Um, we stock these and sell these on the website. We also do a prim version as well. They're shaped with curves to replicate the curves on our body and allow us to create and mould the fabric so that it fits our body. Um, you can see it's it's got a curved edge there and it's curved along the top there and then obviously you've got the curves around the edges here which you can also use you know and you can get quite creative with these you could stand it on the end and then put a sleeve head over the edge so that you're not crushing the volume that you want in a sleeve head for example you could use the side of the ham there you can use the top of the ham but it allows the fabric to fall and drape so that you can get right into those curves and create the curves that you need to in the fabric so it will fit your body. You'll also notice that there's two different types of fabric on a tailor's ham and that's because this side is usually a wool or something with a bit more of a pile and um, that is to be used with fabrics like wool and fabrics maybe that have got more of a pile, it's more suitable to those, it won't crush the pile as much. The other side is usually calico or cotton or similar and can be used for other fabrics. Now I'm just going to demonstrate how I would press, so I've got a, a real curve there. Now if I lie that on the ironing board, I'm just not going to be able to get that to sit flat. I'm not going to be able to get into that curve at all. If I use my tailor's ham, however, I can position, I could position it on the side like so, or I could position it on the top and that enables me to get into those areas. So I'm going to position it on the side of the ham like so. And that allows the fabric to just fall either side and it allows me to get right into that curve there because I want to press this open. And what a tailor's ham will mean as well is that quite often you won't need to press your fabric from the right side you'll just be able to press it from the wrong side and you'll avoid any issues with pressing it from the right side. You might be worried about marking. I mean, obviously you can use your pressing cloth if you are concerned about that, but you know, it just allows you to press a lot more successfully from the wrong side. So you can see there, I've managed to get right into that curve. And then I'm just going to maneuver it along the edge again press that open and then the other end as well just get right into that and press that open and there you can see we've got a lovely neat princess seam from the right side you might not want to press from the right side, but if there are any little puckers, you can smooth those out. Use your pressing cloth if you're worried about marking the fabric. And I'm using the curve again of the tailor's ham here, but you can see I've got a lovely smooth princess seam there now pressed perfectly. So that's how you use your tailor's ham. I'd also recommend using the tailor's ham for darts as well because again it allows the fabric to hang and drape, it allows you to get right to the point. You should always press from the widest end to the point so let's just press that flat like we would a normal seam. That just melds the stitches, secures the seam initially and then we want to press it to one side so again we can just maneuver it on the ham so that we can get right into that point there just make sure that the fabric's draping and falling the way we want it to and just press from that widest end and it allows us to just get right into that point and then we've got a nice neatly pressed dart there Again, if you're confident and happy to, you can press from the right side. You don't have to do that with a tailor's ham. You can just press from the wrong side. 
but it really will allow you to achieve things that you just will not achieve on a flat surface and really get into those areas and I've got some more tools to show you with regards to that as well so one of the other ones I want to show you is this sleeve roll or seam roll as you've guessed it allows you to press seams on sleeves open so here I've got my sleeve um, a sample from before if I just slide the seam roll or sleeve roll inside there we go if I do that we can press that open and again it just allows you to get right into that area instead of trying to manoeuvre it on the ironing board and, and roll it into position and, and get it flat and potentially cr creating creases where you don't want them it allows you to just really focus the attention where you need to so now I'm going to show you some other tools and tips and techniques that you can use in your pressing so first of all I want to show you this mini ironing board by Prim so this is an alternative to the seam roll or sleeve roll that I just showed you you can press seams and sort of tubular small tubular items open on here the seam rolls generally are a bit not not as wide as this so just bear that in mind but you can also use these these are really handy as well if you're short on space and you don't want to have to get your full sized ironing board out every time you sew um, or you've just got some little areas that you need to focus on and press they can be really useful for that because it's easy to just have them up all the time especially if you're using the mini iron that I showed you at the beginning of the video these two items work well together you know that fits perfectly on that board and just great for those small areas that you might want to work on Another tip I wanted to give you is that sometimes if you have stretched the fabric out of shape slightly, for example when attaching a binding to a neck or an armhole, it is possible with lots of fabrics to shrink it back by just hovering the iron and applying some steam like so and it just causes the fibres of the fabric to draw in and will just shrink that fabric back down to its original size and I often do that if I feel that an armhole has been slightly stretched out of shape perhaps while I've been sewing obviously you can use stay stitching to avoid that but you know there are times when it happens and that's a really useful tip to be aware of as well now with regards to pressing into corners that's another issue that I think a lot of us have struggled with at times you know when you want to get right into a corner like on this mock-up collar that I've made here and a really useful tool for doing that is a tailor's point presser or clapper and we stock these on the website this one's mine I use it all the time it's a very beloved piece of equipment for me the clapper bit is the bit on the bottom and that is traditionally used in tailoring to manipulate and sort of wrestle into submission some of those bulkier seams on tailored garments like coats and that sort of thing because it's made from wood and applying pressure after steam has been applied really helps that steam to work into the fabric and really helps to manipulate the fabric and control the fabric and flatten the fabric where it, where it needs doing so that's what that part's used for but the point presser on the top is used to get right into the corners on things like collars, waistbands, that sort of thing. So I'll just demonstrate that to you now. Obviously, I would normally finish the seams, um, I'd trim and grade them and finish them first. But this is just to show you how you were able to get into those corners with this piece of equipment. So if we just position the fabric like so you can see that now I can open up the seam and I can get right into the corner there when I press this open and that is something I just wouldn't be able to do if I didn't have something that I could push into that corner and then equally I can work from the other side as well and I can slide that fabric onto the point presser like so and press that open as well 
and then that has just allowed me to get right into that corner and press right into that corner. Clearly I would need to trim and grade those seams beforehand to turn it through but I just wanted to demonstrate how you can get nicely into that corner there which you're not going to be able to do as well otherwise. The other thing I want to demonstrate with a collar as well or a seam that you would find on a collar like this is that when you press a collar or sometimes a waistband, something where you've got a seam like that, you don't want the seam to be visible on the right side of the garment. Really, you want to roll that seam so it's slightly on the wrong side of the garment and it won't be visible from the right side. And this is where these silicon finger guards come in, which are also from Prim. We stock these on the website. They can really help with just getting a bit of a grip on the fabric and just rolling the fabric and manipulating the fabric. But also they do protect your fingers from the heat as well. So sometimes, you know, when you want real accuracy, you want to hold the fabric in place, but you don't want to burn your fingers. And that really helps with those instances. <laughs> just allows you to get a little bit closer with the with the iron and you can see there that that seam now is pressed so that if this was the right side of the collar that wouldn't be visible from the right side of the garment. The other tools I wanted to show you were just some measuring tools so there's this Dritz Easy Hem ruler that I often use I think this is great for pressing hems and that sort of thing um, there's markings on it for different seam allowances and you can just fold the fabric up onto, if I wanted to press up a hem on this piece of fabric and I wanted to press a 5 8 hem, I could just fold the fabric up like so and press that into place. And that gives me an accurate 5 8 seam there. And then the other tool that I use sometimes with my pressing is just this sliding measuring gauge from Prim as well. So I can set that to a 5 8 seam, for example, and just check my accuracy as I'm pressing different items as well. So I hope you've all enjoyed that today. I've certainly enjoyed sharing my tips and techniques with you all. It's not the most exciting part of sewing, but I really think it is one of the most important parts of sewing. And if you just invest that effort into just learning some of the techniques, following some of the tips, it really will help to take your sewing projects to the next level. As I said at the start of the video, everything I talked about today is available on our lovely website and you'll find all of the links below. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs>